Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we welcome back Jonathan Andresen, who is the Senior Director of Marketing for Bitglass. So welcome back to the jam, Jonathan. Hi, how are you? Yeah, very good. Um, yeah, good to have you. So we're going to be talking a lot about um, remote working and its implications for cybersecurity. So my first question for you is why are remote workers more at risk than in office workers in general? So with remote workers, um, the first thing to know about remote workers is they're they are no longer behind the enterprise data boundary, security boundary, and the firewall. And so they don't have the protection of our traditional uh, layered security that we have in our data center or perhaps in our branch office. And so uh, we lack the visibility and control we normally would have when they're working remotely uh, at home or elsewhere. So that lack of visibility and control can be a problem. Uh, from a security standpoint, we have to rely on what is on their endpoint. And so, for example, remote workers are more at risk um, because typically they're less protected when they're on these, these endpoint devices at home. They're at risk of malware attacks. If they've got personal devices, um, they're at risk because they're probably looking at personal stuff at the same time, which, when, when, which can uh, cause a problem for business data. And so remote workers generally don't have the, the full security layers that we have when we're at the enterprise. And so it can be a problem. And cybercrime knows that people are working remotely and uh, position some of their attacks to target that particular vector. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of the terms that's been thrown around a lot um, in the last kind of 18 months is Secure Access Service Edge or SASE. Um, so um, could you tell me what are the security components of that um, that matter most for remote and hybrid workers? For sure. So there's really three areas to secure access service edge people should be aware of. The first is to protect your cloud data is a cloud access security broker. And that's really important to control and secure and provide visibility into your data going into the cloud, being downloaded from the cloud and created in the cloud. And, and that's really important for today's work since so much of our traffic is cloud, cloud to cloud or you know, uploaded and created in the cloud. The second piece is web security. And so web security has been around for quite a long time with secure web gateways and appliances. Uh, but in today's world, you know, we've gotten used to software as a service models. And so we can provide web security in a SASE context uh, much more efficiently and effectively um, on the endpoint or at the edge as sort of a feature of SASE without having those um, appliances to manage those backhauling data to the data center to, for inspection. We can do all of it and push it down more closely to the user to do the security checks and to validate the, uh, the traffic uh, at the endpoint, which uh, is much more efficient for the network. It's better for the user for privacy and it's uh, easier to, to manage uh, and, and so forth. So that's the second piece. The third piece is um, zero trust network access. The zero trust network access is about providing access to our data center hosted applications. It's not all of our applications will move to the cloud uh, as quickly as, as others, right? And we may have, for whatever reason, uh, kept our SAP or Oracle or some servers at the data center. And we need folks to access those remotely. Uh, and you know, VPNs don't provide the security we need. They just provide an encrypted tunnel. And so ZTNA gives us the data protection and the threat protection combined with the you know, a contextual access. So we only get access to the things that we need and um, more securely. And it employs that zero trust model as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you briefly mentioned uh, VPNs just then. So um, I was wondering if you can expand on the case for a SASE approach uh, versus a VPN approach for remote workers. Um, is one better than the other? Sure. So VPNs have been around since the mid nineties. Uh, I did my master's thesis on VPNs and it's now been many years later, we're still using them. They're very effective because they provide an encrypted tunnel. Um, and so for remote workers, we relied on VPNs when maybe five or 10 or 15% of our workforce was remote. And we put up with some of the configuration challenges and the performance issues of having to tunnel all the way into the data center to get our content. Um, which can be clunky and can have performance issues. But now with like 80, 90% of people working remotely, it just doesn't scale. And so that's the first thing with the challenge with the VPN scenario. Um, the second issue is users don't typically like VPNs. They have to log in a second time. You know, they have to have that always turned on. 
their computer, it's not transparent in terms of the way we would like to build security is to have it transparent to the user. So the user doesn't see the security. They're basically just using the apps and the way they're supposed to be used. Um, and the third piece is that VPNs don't provide the security we need for today's cloud data or uh, even data in general. And so we know in today's world, you know, data, once it leaves the enterprise, it's gone forever. It's replicated, it's gone forever, and it can be a very big problem. So we need to apply some of the rigor of a CASB model of threat protection and data protection, not just to cloud apps, but to those apps that are at our data center. So every application and all data that we access, no matter where we are, uh, is protected from data leakage, is protected from malware and, and cyber threats, and gives us that visibility into the user and into uh, and the control of what, of what data is being used and how it's being used so we know where it is. And knowing where your data is at all times is the key to today's security. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Um, and going back to a bit of a focus on Secure Access Service Edge, um, can you tell me what are some use cases um, of SASE when uh, securing hybrid workers? Exactly, so, so Secure Access Service Edge really is a cloud service. And if you recall, it, it marries cloud security or CASB, it's built around the CASB architecture, it marries that with your network security infrastructure into a single cloud delivered platform that really you'd say is built for digital transformation. It's built for remote working uh, and it's a SaaS basically, a security SaaS. And so the, the use cases for that are primarily, well, for hybrid workers, it's being able to be secure and productive at the same time. Uh, and the use cases can, uh, range from, you know, stopping cyber threats, uh, which are integrated into, into the solution. Um, and those can include phishing attacks. So stopping phishing attacks, which are often a, a part of the attack chain for some of these larger ransomware uh, threats that you see, right? Because everyone's trying to steal your credentials. And phishing is, is proven to be very, uh, it's been with us for a long time. Hackers still use it to lure people into giving up their credentials. And once they're inside, even just one remote worker, they have access and their credentials, their access to the whole corporate corporate network. So uh, malware phishing. Um, uh, so data leakage is a big one. So with data leakage, especially in the cloud world, you know, once data is out of the enterprise and how fast we can share information when we spin up sharing links, data leakage is really important and it needs to be fast. We need to detect very quickly uh, what data is being shared, should it be shared, and apply policy to it uh, very, very quickly. So those are three key use cases, but also, of course, you know, access to our private applications at our data center. We need to make sure that we provide you know, the data protection and threat protection at the same time for those. Uh, we also want to secure access to uh, IaaS applications, AWS and Azure. And you can think of all those developers working at home today using these platforms to build, uh, to write code and spinning up these workloads. Um, very important to have a layer of security for those workers because these applications are not built for security, they're built for productivity. Um, and we need to make sure that they're configured correctly. There's nothing left open that cybercrime can leverage to, to uh, get your data and then exfiltrate it. Um, so there's are several, several of the use cases. In, in all in all, we want to protect uh, no matter whether the user is using a managed device or whether they're, they're using their own personal device, we want to provide the protection for your enterprise data. So they should be able to use their personal device, device as well being in a hybrid model. I've got three or four devices myself, uh, but the policies may be different. You know, I may not get access to everything on my personal device. I may be read only for some applications or some other policy configurations, but no matter where the user is, uh, we need security across all devices, all applications. Um, and making sure that's the right user and providing that zero trust layered security model to make sure that we're continuously uh, monitoring and checking that it's the right person accessing the right data. Right, yeah. Um, I've got one more question for you, Jonathan. So obviously um, security solutions and services are becoming much more popular and necessary with mm -hmm. um, the rise in risk for IT teams. So what should IT teams watch out for when they look at um, engaging security solutions for a hybrid workforce? That's a great idea. So, I mean, the standard has been typically to use a VPN. And of course we know that that's challenging today. 
And so uh, people will gravitate towards other types of endpoint solutions. And endpoint solutions are, are part of the security framework that we need. The issue is it's, it's all about our data. I mean, sure our data is secure no matter where it is. And the, the user in this, in this model is so important. So, you know, I've seen companies, um, you know, deploy security that, that solutions that look on the service to be secure, but users resist them or they or they provide, uh, they slow down the business a little bit. For example, um, if you put agents everywhere, uh, that can be a problem. You'll, you'll very rarely get a hundred percent take up on all your devices everywhere. If you're requiring this much compliance by users to have agents and, and it can slow down the business. So we recommend an architecture where if you've got hybrid workers, you know, you only use agents where, when absolutely necessary, you know, they're accessing certain types of protocols or certain types of managed devices where agents are important, uh, but try to minimize the use of agents for things like ZTNA uh, from using browser based applications. Um, if I've got personal devices, I should limit agents for that. And so that's really important, I think, for hybrid workers today. People want to do their work how they want to do it. They want to work remotely on multiple types of devices. They don't want security to slow things down. And if you slow things down, users will typically find a way to go around it. And then you've got other security issues. The last piece is um, when you're deploying a remote security solution is to look at, at a solution that scales. And you know, with remote workers today, it's de facto going to be the standard for almost all workers. We're going to be spinning up applications, new devices, new users, new locations all the time. So having an architecture, a SaaS architecture or a CASB architecture that scales on the public cloud is very important. And ask your, your vendor how many outages they've had. Because if you've had an outage, uh, your security totally is exposed. And we want to minimize outages. We can do that by being on the public cloud and having a, a polyscale architecture like we do. But uh, that's a very important question to look for and make sure that we, we, we don't have outages. We have a very resilient uh, uptime, for example, four nines is what we would suggest. Um, and so you put those things together. There's a way to provide not just security for your hybrid workers, but to create a workplace that is fundamentally very productive, where you can use the latest applications, the latest devices, and really get your job done quickly while being secure. Perfect. Brilliant. Well, um, yeah, that's all we have time for today, uh, Jonathan, but thank you for joining me for your fourth IT Jam with us. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Have a great day.